What happened? What happened in the process? Where did his heart go? Did the cold water committee come and put the fire out? You know who the cold water committee are? It's anybody that does not delight and rejoice in God like you're rejoicing. It's people that come up to you and that complain about everything. That's the cold water committee. They come and, and, and douse out the fire. Well, everything begins right there. You must be a Christian. This is where it all begins. And there's only two types of people in the Bible. Those who believe and those who don't believe. That's the only two types of people. That's the only two types of people in the world. Those who believe and those who don't believe. But there's only one type of person or people that can understand the Bible, and that's believers. Believers are the only ones that can truly understand the Bible. Let me have you to look at that with me at 1 Corinthians chapter 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. And if you'll notice down at verse 9, Paul says to the Corinthians, The things which eye has not seen and ear has not heard, and which have not entered the heart of man, all that God has prepared for those who love him. For to us God has revealed them through the Spirit, for the Spirit searches all things, even the depths of God. It's the Holy Spirit of God that reveals all of these things to you and to me. As we completed a study on the Holy Spirit, I hope that you got that message You've got that point that it's the Holy Spirit who is key to your walk, key to your understanding of Scripture, key to your application of Scripture, key to killing sin in your life. He is key, key to having a correct attitude, key to delighting in the Word of God. He is key. And if you'll notice there that believers, they are the ones to whom God has revealed His will to. He says at the end of verse 9, For those who love him. God has prepared this for those who love him. He's prepared something for us that our eyes haven't seen yet. And our ears haven't heard yet. We haven't tasted of yet. There's a future inheritance that is yet to come. If you'll notice... He says in verse 10 that God has revealed them. That's the word apocalypto. That means he has disclosed. He's he's taken off the cover to uncover it. Apocalypso is the word that's used in Revelation 1.1 where it says the revelation of Jesus Christ. It means the unveiling. He has unveiled this to us. He has disclosed it. He has made it manifest to us through his spirit. And if you'll notice here, he says to us, emphatic position means to us and to us alone. It's only to us, only to believers that he has revealed these things. Because they do not apply to unbelievers. He hasn't promised this to an unbeliever. Just as we read in Psalm 1, the way of the righteous. What is promised to the way of the ungodly is judgment. Not the promise of blessing. He says it's to us and to us alone. It is as unnecessary as it is impossible for man to try to discover God's truth on his own. Just like trying to come to Christ in salvation on your own. That's an impossibility. What man cannot find, God has given to us. Man cannot come to God on his own, so God has to come to him. And the Holy Spirit has actually invaded man's closed box. He's shown him God. Well, this one passage right here just points out the fact that this has been given to believers and believers alone. But let me show you another passage, and it's found in Matthew 13. Matthew 13, in the parable of the souls. Verse 13. Matthew 13, 10 and 11, Jesus reveals to his disciples that the understanding of God's word was reserved for them and not for unbelievers. And it's very interesting, if you look back at verse 11, actually verse 10, the disciples asked Jesus, why do you speak to them in parables? And these veiled sayings, these riddles, if you will, because they don't understand this, why are you speaking to them in this? And Jesus answered them, 
To you it has been granted to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it has not been granted. That's why he spoke to them in parables. It's been granted to you. It's been granted to believers to understand. You remember when Jesus said to his disciples, there's coming a time when I will speak plainly to you about the Father? And they said, now we understand. Now we understand. You're speaking to us in plain language, not figurative language. We understand that you've been speaking about the Father now. Believers are the only ones who can truly understand the Word of God. And that's why you have to be a Christian if you're going to understand the Bible. You see, because unbelievers cannot understand the Bible. You go back to 1 Corinthians chapter 2. If you'll notice some more what Paul is saying there about believers and unbelievers as he makes these contrasts. If you'll notice down in verse 14, he says, The natural man does not accept or receive the things of the Spirit of God. For they are foolishness to him, and he cannot understand them because they are spiritually appraised. It's on a totally different level, totally different plane. They can't receive it. They can't accept it. Decomai, to accept or to receive by a deliberate and ready reception of what is offered. They can't do it. John MacArthur, he says... It's possible to read the Bible, even many different copies and versions of the Bible, and yet not understand it. It's possible to study the Bible for many years, memorizing much of it, and still not understand it. The scribes and the Pharisees of Jesus' day were highly trained in the Old Testament, yes, they missed its central message. They completely failed to recognize the promised Messiah when he came and lived among them. They did not believe Jesus because they did not truly believe Moses, the great lawgiver in whom they gave their hope. They did not accept the things of the Spirit of God because those things seemed to be foolishness. And because those men did not belong to God, they could not understand them because they are spiritually appraised. Those scribes and Pharisees, like everyone who rejects God, live only in the realm of the natural man. They had no means and they had no desire to understand the spiritual nature of God's word. What's the first thing that you realized after you became a believer? That now you could understand things, right? About the Bible. Sure, there's things that we have to study really hard and at, at understanding, but, but that was the first thing. This, this awareness that is taking place now. It's, it's like your eyes have been opened. The lights come on. Steve Barkowski, he was a quarterback for the Atlanta Falcons and He said this, for years the Bible was a dead book to me, like grits without salt. But after I gave my life to Jesus Christ, it became alive. I saw the Bible was God's way of talking to me. Isn't that what you feel? You you read that, and it's like it came alive. This is a living book, not a dead book. But yet for an unbeliever, until they surrender their heart to Jesus Christ, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. Because they can't receive it. And secondly, they can't understand it. Over in John eight forty three, Jesus said, Why do you not understand my speech? And then he gives the answer. Because you are not able to listen to my word. And then he said, You are of your father the devil, and the desires of your father you want to do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and does not stand in the truth, Because there is no truth in him. And when he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own resources, for he is a liar and the father of it. But because I tell you the truth, you do not believe me. Who's he talking about? Unbelieving. Unbelieving Jews. Why do you not understand my speech? Because you are not able to listen to my word. 